It'd be sweet if the Lakers could get Jalen Brunson, but he is not for sale. He not is the all. number one boy of all of New York <laughs> City. He went for 40 last night to drag the Knicks to a comeback win over the Indiana Pacers, as we were saying earlier, the night he got named an all-star reserve. Dan wrote an awesome piece about the jaw-dropping rise of Jalen Brunson into the NBA superstar that nobody saw coming. And it was a really smart take just being that so many of the conversations I have around this time of year are absolutely looking forward to what can we do now in consideration with the offseason upcoming, especially being that, as we've been talking about with guys down the totem pole like Xavier Tillman, there's just not such a robust free agent market anymore. I mean, before, besides Jalen Brunson and Fred Van Vliet changing teams in the last couple of years, the last guys to do it before that were Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and then Kawhi Leonard. You could, Paul George didn't even go to the Clippers by free agency. It was a trade. And Kawhi, by all accounts, only went to LA, the Clippers, or like, or like the nail that put her over the top, whatever the analogy is, was because they could add Paul George. So right. like that's like a that's like a zero point five addition to me, because like his even his free agency where he did take some meetings was in theory decided by a trade. So just super rare nowadays that someone this good would actually reach the open market and then. He has exploded even beyond everyone's wildest imaginations besides Rick Brunson himself right? and probably a couple people in his corner. I mean, there's Leon Rose, with, you know, like, right? Like the, you know, the, I, and Tom I, Thibodeau. I, for sure. I still think if you injected True Serum and Tom Thibodeau and anyone up top making decisions in New York, they wouldn't say they thought he'd be this good because... The logic that they that the messaging out of MSG throughout all the Donovan Mitchell trade stuff was that we're st- and it still is now that we still need a, a a number A guy or a number A a letter A number one option guy to move this thing truly into championship contention they, with Donovan they didn't want to put all the picks and all the players in that deal because they wanted to save more to go get someone else even bigger than Donovan while they already had Jalen. So I think all those clues indicate that they never thought he'd be averaging 30 and being an easy 40-point threat every single night where you can't count him out after he's getting punched in the face with two minutes to go. Yeah, I mean, shout out Jalen Brunson, man. Especially like that dude struggled in Manila. Struggled, had a tough time to the point where I was definitely like feeling bad for him on a human-to-human level. And he just has, I mean, the NBA game is so much different. He is so so terrific at getting to the paint and drawing fouls. But yeah, I don't know. I'm going to stop talking because you wrote about the guy. (laughs) Uh, Well, first I'll just uh, direct everybody. Yeah, go read the thing. I I wrote it and I really like it. And then because I got lucky and I wrote about him on the Thursday, the the idea of writing about him on the Thursday was they're going to announce all-star reserves later. I have a pretty good sense that he's going to be one of them. This would be a lead into that. And then not only is he announced as a reserve, but he has a monster game that's like a, a and the way in the way that Madison Square Garden games can get like can become like, re, you know, revivals or become, you know, like like there's like everybody's catching the Holy Ghost in the stands, like the whole building sort of shakes and warms up. And that was it was like, an, you know, we talked about anointing earlier. That felt like an anointing of a star that moment. And. He was, as you mentioned, overcome with emotion. Uh, you know, the, he had no words for what to say about the feeling of arriving at that moment um, and, and doing it at Madison Square Garden in front of the, that fan base that was so, you know, saluting him so much. It worked out so well that they made a really nice piece of art to go with it, and they're going to run it again today. So, if you, if you yeah, it's, it's available at Yahoo Sports NBA. Go check it out. Um, the thing to me is one whether he, it's on the people that have criticized or, or not criticized, but have raised the critique of. He's not a real 1A or he can't be a real 1A in the postseason because he is a you know generously listed 6'1 or 6'2 point guard and teams will throw length at him. They will throw traps at him. They will force other members of the Knicks to make plays. And he can't just sort of overwhelm that in the way that a Kevin Durant can or a Giannis can or a LeBron can or a Jokic can or whoever, uh, you know, that Steph can just render that stuff immaterial with shooting, all that kind of stuff. And may, uh, like that's again, that is a rarefied air that we're talking about five or six guys like in the last decade or plus of the league. I get that. 
Um, but he has elevated himself into like you talk about letters and numbers, like all NBA, like, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the number might be like second team, maybe. Uh, depending on how the rest of the season goes, like that's not out of the realm of possibility for Jalen Brunson to be an all NBA on the All NBA team this year, and to be there on a de- a declining contract that pays him less than twenty percent of the salary cap for like a top 15, 20 guy in the league right now is uh, an outcome that I don't. Yeah, as you mentioned, I don't think that anybody in their wildest dreams could have really anticipated a couple of summers ago. Uh, no matter how hard the Knicks wanted to go after him, and that was very clear and very evident very early. Um, but it's they are now down. Like OG Ananobi hasn't played the last couple of games. As you mentioned, Randall out with a dislocated shoulder and remains to be seen. He's not even going to get reevaluated for two or three weeks. They're starting Isaiah Hartenstein and Precious Achua together at the, in the front court. They, they go seven deep last night. Like they are not, there's not a whole lot in the cupboard right now. And Brunson is just rendering all that immaterial, like 30 and seven on 616 or 612 true shooting since the beginning of January. Moving on from Barrett, and uh, Emmanuel quickly created like a playmaking void. And he has just been like, I will do more. And he's doing it at he, not MVP levels. Those are not the letters that I'm going to start using. But <laughs> when you start you know, looking at who is producing points, assists, shooting efficiency and avoiding turnovers, it's kind of like Brunson and SGA and not very many other guys. So that's the level he's playing at right now. And it's been uh, something of a revelation in New York. And yeah, I mean, it's cool to watch. That moment was incredible to see last night. And now it's a matter of, you know, how how long he can keep that going. 